One day, you're looking at a chart on a centralized exchange and you see that Bitcoin is $17,500, and you consider buying a whole Bitcoin. But before you buy from a centralized exchange, you decide to check out a decentralized protocol to see if they have a lower trade fee. And, as usual, the DEX charges about half the fee that the centralized exchange does. And then you notice that on the DEX, the price of a Bitcoin is $17,000. You realize that if you buy one Bitcoin for $17,000 here, you can sell that same Bitcoin for $17,500 there. You think about the trade fees on the DEX, the gas cost to swap on the DEX, the gas cost to send the Bitcoin, and the fee the centralized exchange will charge you to sell. And you realize that even with all of that friction, it would still be profitable. So you decide to try and see if it will actually make you any money. And it does. You make about $300 on this particular trade. And now you see that because you sold Bitcoin, the price went down from $17,500 to $17,450. And because you bought Bitcoin, the price went up from $17,000 to $17,050. Wait a minute. Can we do this again? You can. You won't make as much money on the trades because the gap in prices is smaller, but it would still be profitable. So you do it again, and again, and again, and again. And you keep doing this trade until it stops making you money. You realize that when Bitcoin is $17,200 on the DEX and $17,300 on the centralized exchange, that after you pay the gas to swap, the trade fee to the DEX, the gas to send the Bitcoin, and the trade fee to sell on the centralized exchange, that you wouldn't make any money. So you decide to stop. This whole process is called an arbitrage trade. Arbitrage is when a user buys an asset in one market and immediately sells it in another market at a higher price, or attempts to. One of the defining characteristics of an ARB is that the user who is buying and selling the asset doesn't actually want to keep the asset. They want to make money by finding opportunities to buy low and sell high with no waiting. In the current crypto era, late 2022, Arbitrage is usually performed by a bot that is coordinating with an ETH validator node. And these bots frequently use flash loans, which they maximize the value of by coordinating with the validator. And why exactly would a validator coordinate with an arbitrage bot? Because they're owned by the same person, or sometimes group of people. So that's what arbitrage is, and that's how it's done. But why does it happen? The answer is simple and unavoidable. Arbitrage happens because markets are inefficient, and the traders who make swaps do not go to the markets that have the best price. They go to the market which is the most convenient for them, or the one that they have the most brand loyalty for. If many people use Coinbase to buy and sell despite a competitor having a very, very slightly better price, most of the users of Coinbase would just rather do the thing that is slightly faster and more convenient than getting a 0.1% better deal on their purchase. And the more people who partake in this practice, the more the disparity between the prices. And don't think for a second that Coinbase doesn't have ARB bots and ETH validators to perform ARBs on its own exchange. They definitely do. They probably even feed their order book data to that bot which is all totally legal, by the way. And the more you learn about just all the ways that centralized exchanges have an advantage, the more you'll be confused about how places like FTX can still lose all that money. So, arbitrage happens in every market, and those people, or bots, who perform arbitrage are called arbitrageurs. The point is that price discrepancies allow for users to capture value by making savvy trades. So, here's a thought. Why don't DEXs make their own arbitrage bots and have those bots make money for their liquidity providers. This is exactly what the Bancor Fastlane proposal is. It is a proposal to create an arbitrage bot which will capture value that would be leaving the platform and instead redirect that value to the LPs. Now there are a couple of problems. The first is that arbitrage bots are already extremely, hilariously hyper-optimized. Arbitrage is literally free money for anyone who can afford the infrastructure to run the bots and the validator nodes. So trying to build a bot to compete in this already extremely saturated market would be really, really hard. But what if Bancor gave its bot a special advantage? This is also in the Fastlane proposal. 
The Bancor Fastlane proposes that the bot which does arbitrage for Bancor should get special permissions to not be charged a trade fee on Bancor. This means that the Bancor Fastlane ARB bot would have the ability to do an ARB on trades before other bots even could find it profitable. So in the original proposal, this arbitrage bot was actually going to be just some code that was running on its own, but several iterations of feedback from the community have slightly changed the technicalities of how it would work. In the latest iteration of the proposal, the Bancor Fastlane arbitrage bot technically wouldn't be a bot. It would be a smart contract that anyone could trigger. Anyone could place the inputs, pay the gas, and execute the trade, and the smart contract would give them a 10% cut of the profit. And the remaining 90% of the earnings would go to buying BNT and reducing the deficit. I see this as an absolute win. So let's review. Arbitrage happens all the time, and the main things that get in the way of making money on ARBs are 1. Trade fees. Arbitrage bots have to wait until there is a large enough price discrepancy between markets before the trades are profitable. The higher the trade fee, the more they have to wait. 2. Startup capital. The margins on ARBs are usually so small that you need millions of dollars to make money on an ARB, so arbitrage bots use flash loans. Flash loans charge a fee which cuts into the profits. 3. Every ARB bot is competing with every other ARB bot for the same trades. 4. Traditional DEXs don't have any incentive to create ARB bots that benefit users because they have no way to send that money to the users because everything is matched with ETH. But the Bancor Fastlane ARB smart contract is different. First off, there's no trade fee on the Bancor side of the ARB. The gap between the prices can be smaller and it would still make money. The second is that flash loans would be input by users who would find the best rates. We don't have to spend time creating a program or a bot which has to look for the best flash loans. Users will do that for us. 3. The Bancor Fastlane wouldn't have to compete with other ARB bots because it will be able to find profitable ARBs before other bots can because it doesn't have to pay trade fees to Bancor. And lastly, the profit made would go towards LPs because all of the pools on Bancor are paired with BNT. I see absolutely nothing wrong with this proposal, and honestly, it's been a long time coming. In the future, I hope that Bancor 3 will support flash loans, because then users who trigger the fast lane could get their flash loan from Bancor and pay the flash loan fee to the LPs, which would get them double paid. There's been some recent discussion about the creation of a Bancor loan dApp, and while it isn't happening today or tomorrow, it's going to happen. And all of these systems are symbiotic. They add value to Bancor and to each other. Traditional arbitrage takes value away from Bancor and puts it in the hand of ARB bots. So instead of doing that, let's just create something that enriches the LPs on our own platform. And by our, I mean the Bancor DAO. Seems like an easy choice to me. Next time, we'll go through some actual examples using real numbers to demonstrate what the profitability of such trades would look like. See you then.